Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. Chelsea news today, we're going to go into things. I think this is officially the worst day of the year if you're a Premier League football fan. The Thursday of the first international break, the first Thursday let me add. You've just had three matches, you're excited, you're back into things. You start looking at your FPL thinking, who am I going to bring in? Who am I getting rid of this weekend? And bloody hell you realise it's the Nations League at the weekend. Absolute disaster. However, Esteval hopefully will be making his Brazil debut as a 17-year-old on Sunday. I'm excited for that. And uh, Nonny, Cole Palmer and Levi Cole will for England, but Cole Palmer, no. We're going to discuss him today. He's injured. Or is he injured or just fatigued? We're going to go into that. But we begin with the opening news here that Chris Juracek, who was the Chelsea chief executive has today announced that he has stood down from being the chief executive of Chelsea Football Club. I think a lot of people will be quite happy with this one, particularly match-going fans. Chris Juricic apparently was the guy who removed the travel subsidy for the coach for away fans travelling to away games. This never went down well. It should never have happened. Chelsea away fans are some of the absolute best in the league and we should do everything that we can to support fans going from Chelsea or wherever we're from to blooming Newcastle and all of these places across the country. Chelsea away fans deserve it and he removed it. So I think a lot of people are going to be happy with this. Let's take a look here at Nizar Kinsella's tweet. Chelsea has today announced that Jason Gannon has been promoted to President and Chief Operating Officer. As part of the promotion, Gannon will be taking over from Chris Juracek, who, as planned, will transition back to be an operating executive with Clear Lake Capital. The co-controlling owners of Chelsea reads a statement by the club. Now, I also here want to discuss something within the same parameters and realms here within this Chelsea news, that Chelsea have been cleared by the Premier League for the sale of two hotels to assist the company to keep them compliant with profit and sustainability rules. This is PSR that you hear a lot about, per James Ollie, under fair market value rules. I want to tie these pieces of news together regarding Chris Juracek stepping down. It's not like he's been fired Vince McMahon style. He stepped down. And I've got an issue here with the way that there's a lot of chopping and changing at Chelsea when it comes to the internals at the club. You've obviously got a large section of the fan base that no matter what happens with Chelsea, they're going to hate the new owners. That's cool. My standpoint with it is, I think at this point of the project, we need to be further along than where we are right now, which means as a fan, I'm disappointed. I think Chelsea fans deserve better. I think there have been too many things that have been said by certain members of the ownership that just doesn't go down very well with Chelsea fans, and I'll be honest, the reason I'm talking about all of this in conjunction to the hotel sale is that as much as on a footballing standpoint, things might not be fluid, they might not really know exactly what's going on as well as other owners might have in the Premier League, but I will say this, in terms of like loopholes and business dealings to make sure that financially Chelsea aren't in trouble... So far, so good from these new owners, to be quite honest. Selling the hotel to ourselves is basically what we've done here without all the legal jargon that goes with it in order to, like, cut the losses that we've made as a club by, like, 76 point something million quid is pretty, is pretty smart. But the fact of the matter is these business decisions that we can do financially, you can only do them once. So now... It is absolutely of the utmost importance that these new owners make sure that if we are going to be change, changing chief executive at Chelsea, if we're going to have all of these people involved from like that business side of things at Clear Lake, if people are going to be coming and going, it means that someone else, in this case, it's going to be flipping Jason Gannon that goes into a new role. We don't want to have all this lead time that can often come with high profile roles within businesses. And somebody who's going to take over the chief executive role at Chelsea needs to be well equipped, needs to be armoured to be able to make the best decisions for the day-to-day -day running and execution of what happens at Chelsea Football Club. So we can be like, yeah, look what we've done here with complying for PSR. It is technically smart business. You can only flip and do it once, all right? 
And at this point now, we need to see that some of these smart business decisions that have got nothing to do with players, we can now make sure that it's now the signings that are the smart ones. They're not overinflating the squad so that we're sat here looking at the Turkish deadline day to try and offload Harvey Vale, Ben Chilwell, numerous other players that we've still got on our books at Chelsea. We need to see now, as a fan base and as a club, these new owners getting the football decisions right on a consistent basis. There can be chopping and changing and above the playing level, things can happen. But I don't want to see all of this like up in the air, blase stuff happening and yet we still operate the same way in the transfer market. Because what that does is it creates that kind of environment in the dugout. It creates that environment on the training ground. Chelsea's inconsistency on the pitch is a direct result of the inconsistency that is happening above it. And I'm not going to be that guy that comes out here and just starts screaming about how bad these owners are, how bad this is, how bad that is, oh, how far we've fallen. Trust me, I'm as upset as everybody else that we haven't won a trophy in over two seasons. I'm upset that I look at the transfer business and I'm like, why would we buy a Mari Kellerman whose market value is a million, but we buy him for 20 quid? Oh, wait, because we're doing favours for other clubs. So they do a favour for us because we are literally like squeezing at the barrel here to be able to make sure that we get through PSR, to make sure that we don't get transfer bans, to make sure that we don't get point deductions. This is not how Chelsea should be ran in the long term. Simple as that. We need to make sure that the decisions that we're making are done correctly. And, you know, Chris Jurisic, as I said at the start of the video, wasn't really a fan favourite, was he? Wasn't really doing the best job to make sure that the connection between the club, the fans, is on side. He's not done very well at all. And I think, to be honest, it is still something that I would like to see from the new owners. I want to get updates the way that Edu Gaspar for Arsenal talks and makes a video talking about the transfer window. I'd like to see this. We need transparency, particularly as results continue to be so inconsistent on the field. I want to know, as a Chelsea fan, where the ownership thinks we are in conjunction to with what they envisaged it being. I want to know when they say about Chelsea being a successful club and continuing to win honours. I want to know how it looks to be in the Conference League. I want to know what the plan is next. So as much as I've gained an understanding in, in terms of acceptance and actual in some ways, appreciation for the business that we've done. I think we've got a really talented squad now. I think we've bought two of the best young players in the world, the creme de la creme of young talents in Pires and Esteval that are going to be massive signings for Chelsea in the future. I think there's been some very questionable deals that have come in. But I also think that the way that Chelsea have now got the most expensive squad in the world, if these players were like 29, 30 and they were still the most expensive, I'm like, this is pure lunacy because you're going to have to go and spend it all again because they're going to be old and retiring in three or four years. What Chelsea have got is a squad where, yes, we're incredibly young. Look at Strasbourg as well, another blue co team. As much as right now the results are suffering, and trust me, if we keep going season after season after season, without winning trophies. And yes, I know, season after season after season. That's three. That's the repetition I'm talking about. If we don't win anything this year, trust me, I'm going to start questioning things more. Trust me, I'm going to not sit here trying to look at the, out, the, the positives that we could possibly have. At the minute, I see a squad that is developing. And yes, we might right now have, according to CIES Football Observatory, Chelsea's current squad is the costliest in the world and the highest values ever recorded, with the club having committed 1.28 billion euros, including add-ons, and 1.15 billion without them to recruit them. If that is the way we're looking at this, you cannot not win things. There's no way you can have the most expensive squad in the world and not win anything, which is why as much as right now I'm not going and just slating the owners at every given opportunity, slating the transfer policy of the club at every opportunity, I get what we're trying to do. We want to make sure that we're not paying players 200 grand a week every flipping year when they're not that good. Chelsea, yes, we've won a load of trophies, but we've also spent a lot of money and paid ridiculous wages on some very average footballers. And I think you look at the profile of squad that we've got now, there's definitely enough talent there 
to suggest that Chelsea are going to go places. And I'm hoping, and I'm really pretty much making sure that it's got to be this season. We've got to at least compete for some kind of trophy this year. And for me, we've got to get top four. Otherwise, I'm not going to be happy whatsoever. I don't think we're making progress if that is the case. But one player that we do have at Chelsea that is going to be the absolute cornerstone to making sure that we are successful as a football club is the man that's been nominated for the 2024 Ballon d'Or. Cole Palmer is a Ballon d'Or nominee. And I'll be quite honest, I'll put the, the picture up on the screen now. I don't think, and this is more like a footballing opinion than a Chelsea one, I don't think I've ever been so underwhelmed by a Ballon d'Or 30 player shortlist than this. I think there's one player that I absolutely do think should be on there and Neymar's spoken about it. I think Rodrigo from Real Madrid has to be on there. How is Bukayo Saka on there over Rodrigo? I do not know. But Cole Palmer, what a year this man has had. He's not going to win the Ballon d'Or this season. Let's be real. Not saying he's never going to win it. I really hope that he does. And I hope it's at Chelsea. But what an incredible year this man has had. And he's not going to be playing with England in the Nations League, which is great news. Apparently, it's not because of an injury, but it's because of muscle fatigue. So resting for this international break, if anything... That is the positive that we can take from this international break. Cole Palmer won't be playing for England. He's got two weeks to rest up and make sure that he's fit and ready for Bournemouth. However, I'll say this. If he's still feeling tired, if there is a worry that he is one game away or one pull away or one stretch away from a big injury, don't play him. This is why Chelsea have got so much depth in attack. This is the moment where we're like... Are you ready to play? And if Cole Palmer is not even 100% sure, it's not worth the risk. We cannot go one, two months out without this guy. We cannot. He is so key to Chelsea being as good as we are right now. And, well, as good as we could be, I'd say. We're not great right now, but we're, we're, cut, we're doing okay. We're, we're making positive steps. I'm seeing it. Cole Palmer is so important to that. But hopefully, he's going to be ready and back in time for the game against Bournemouth. So, yeah. Today's video has kind of been like, I guess, looking at the business side of Chelsea and what's going on. And in conjunction to that, as much as, you know, having the hotel sales approved by the Premier League and we've not broken any rules there and it helps us with PSR, this is great, whoopee do. But I also want to see so much more consistency above player level at this club. And I need to see results now because this is the third season of this so-called project. And I hate calling it that because we're Chelsea Football Club and it should just be, this is our third year. We've got to win a flipping trophy now because we've not won one in two years. So that's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm thinking about it right now. I'd love to see a bit more communication, proper communication. And yeah, to see Arsenal and Edu dealing with things the way that they do and looking at that as like, a, I wish we were like them in that sense. Don't get me wrong. That's the only thing. But blimey, I'd like to see it. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I'll see you in the next one.